I'm gonna have this thing on the stream. Maybe one day. Hey, people! People are mad at me for pushing modesty. That's trash. Responding to your YouTube comments. Oh, shit! It's a response- Hello. It's a response video! I said- Abby's gonna respond, and I'm responding to Abby! That's amazing. Also, this video's got a lot of dislikes. I'm here for it. Come here. Classic crew, and welcome to today's video, where I'm going to be answering your comments on my modesty video. So there's another modesty video. Okay, but we can do this one. Okay, this is probably gonna catch us up, okay? So a few months ago- Also, I classic crew? Isn't that a type of like, jean from Old Navy or something? All right. I did a video called Why You Should Dress Modestly. Mm. And I got a lot of views on that video and a lot of comments. And I thought it would be fun to respond to some of those comments here mm. and respond to mm. some of those concerns here. So some of it's gonna be a little bit funny, a little bit sassy, but Ooh. some of it is gonna be serious too, because this is a topic that a lot of people- Wait, here's the issue. If all the comment, wait, what if I don't agree with the comments that are being made? Oh no, wait, hold on, that's the problem. What if all the comments are like, you stupid whore, you piece of shit. Like, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna have to take her side. Hold on, what was the other video? That's not how you spell anything. Okay, wait, this is from seven months ago, 1.4 million views. But I watched it? Did I watch this on stream? Does anyone remember? Did I watch this on stream? I did. Oh, okay. This is like the follow-up then. Okay, we can do it. Let's give it a shot. I have a lot of questions about, and I want to answer them as honestly as I can. But before we get into that, I really want to thank Nord Green for sponsoring today's video. Don't. Nord Green- Stop. Absolutely Stop. how light this watch is to get this in the navy blue. And Come then on. And they have eco-friendly packaging. Come which on. Which if you buy a watch, they will give back to one of those. Two things. minutes? Shameless. Three causes. It's a this with Nord Green. So I've got the link in the description box below. Of course, you guys know I would never recommend a product to you guys that I just get oh into Oh my it. god. So what I noticed when okay. I was going through the comments on my modesty video was that most of the questions sort of fell into four categories. So what I figured I would do is I would actually just address each category. And Make sure to like and subscribe to this video if you're enjoying it, by the way. And then I'll just splash a bunch of the comments on the screen and you can kind of see them for yourself. So the first category I want to talk about is the comment that I made in the video that men are visual creatures, not emotional ones. Oh, I remember that. Let me clarify that because it did come up quite a bit in the comments. When men and women meet for the first time, among the first things they're going to notice about each other is their looks. And this is even more particular for men. Both men and women are attracted to each other and attracted to each other's bodies. Oh God. Oh God. What am I even supposed to comment on here? Okay, I just want to say I really do appreciate the ultimate fucking irony of e-girl trad wife aesthetics, you know? Like, what, at, like make, having a cute little background decor and dressing up for the camera, and then you're gonna get to an audience of tens of thousands of people and talk about how to be a trad wife. Like, it's, it's very strange to me, you know? Um, okay, what are we talking about here? So the guy and the girl, they see each other. All right, let's do it. But men and women aren't symmetrical in that attraction. Okay. Men and women's sexualities are just different from each other. I have two studies that are both very good examples of this, and I'll link them in the description box below. Russell Clark and Elaine Hatfield ran a study on a campus, on a college campus, and what they did was they had an average looking female student walk up to young men on that campus, and this young woman just said, would you like to go to bed with me tonight? There were three answers that the men could respond with, and 75% of those respondents said yes. Said yes, I would like to go to bed with you tonight. Not knowing anything else about this girl, not knowing anything else about her personality, said yes. They then flipped it, where they had an average looking guy go up to young women on campus, 0% of women said yes. What does that tell you about it tells you a lot of stuff. Okay, there are two, okay, hold on. There are two ways to approach this, the correct way and the incorrect way, okay? Prescriptively and descriptively, okay? So, hold on. The problem with people like Abby over here is that she's making prescriptive arguments about the research that you find on the difference between how men and, men and women behave sexually, okay? So, let me give you an example, okay? Here's a quick example, all right? Say you have a guy and a girl. They're both 19 years old, they're in college, they're both horny as fuck, okay? They're desperate, desperate to pound or get pounded, okay? They're just, they're, they're, dripping for it, all right? Now here's the issue, okay? Generally speaking, there are a bunch of conditions that make it easier for the guy to get away with casual sex than for the girl to get away with casual sex. 
among those issues being the increased likelihood of the girl being susceptible to rape or sexual assault and increased social stigma. No guy is ever shamed for fucking around easy. Girls get shamed for that shit all the time. There's also a much different rate. See, listen, I, I don't like to have her on about this because if you don't know this stuff, like it, found, it sounds like weird, cringy virtue signaling male feminist bullshit. But like, unironically, if you're a guy, isn't it great to be able to just walk around campus at night? I could just do that. It's 10 p.m. I can just walk around campus. Doesn't matter what for. I can just walk around, listen to some fucking beats. I can practice my stroll. I can, I can walk with my feet as far apart as possible. I can do the crab walk. I can do whatever I want. Girls, they walk in packs at night. Unless you're just walking from dorm building to dorm building, they tend to walk in groups. You know why? Because there's a very high likelihood. Sorry, by very high, I mean a greater likelihood than with me. I don't mean like 90%, but there's a much higher likelihood they'll get harassed or like some weird will happen. A lot more weird shit that goes on with how women get treated with regards to sex. So here's the issue, okay? And here's the answer. Is it true that men and women approach sexuality differently? Yeah, undeniably that's true. Is that because of some inherent biological difference or is that because of a bunch of social and conditions? Well, it's hard to say. There are arguments that there are biological differences and if you don't believe that, talk to a trans woman who's undergoing hormone therapy uh, about how different types of hormones can affect your brain. But the difference is when you make prescriptive arguments about this, you make it sound like it's invalid for people to act a given way because it's not socially acceptable, you know? If a lady wants to be super slutty or whatever, that's fine. I guess most ladies won't be. But if she wants to be, that's great. Go for it. I don't know. It's not my problem. We live in a free country. The issue here is that classically, Abby is making a video about the moral virtue of modesty. She's not making descriptive arguments. She's making prescriptive arguments, which means that these studies don't reaffirm the moral position she's trying to assert. Does that make sense? I, yeah. Can you address the study she's using? Yeah, we, we just looked at it. I don't know, when was that? 1989, okay. Using a 30-year-old study for sexual norms. Um, gender differences in receptivity to sexual offers. Both of these studies are saying that men are more willing to just flat out have sex with random people than women are, which is probably true, I mean. Anecdotally, that's probably the case. Female and male sexuality, it's different. It's just different. In another study, there were 88 friends, male-female friendships on a college campus, and they separated the friends, they put the boy in one room and the girl in the other, and the men were much more likely to be attracted to their female friend than vice versa. And the men were also more likely to think that their female friend was interested in them, as opposed to the other way around. So men's sexuality is different than women's. Again, you can't make biological arguments based off of that. Um, Somebody said that the, the conclusion to this study in, included something that I said. Was there anything in here that indicated that social conditions... <sighs> Guy's square value, traditional... We now know that this is so. We're not quite sure why this is so. It may be that a sociobiologist success, uh, suggest women are eager for love and commitment, men are eager for sexual activity. Such theorizing is consistent with the data. Both men and women were willing to date a total stranger, Women were unwilling to go to a man's apartment or to have sexual relations. Men, on the other hand, were surprisingly willing to go to a strange woman's apartments or to bed. Um, in fact, they were less willing to accept an invitation to a date than to have sexual relations. Interesting. Consistent with this interpretation were the subject's reactions to the requests. In general, the female experimenters reported that men were at ease with the request. They would say, why do we have to wait until tonight? Or, I cannot go, but tomorrow would be fine. The men that said no even gave apologies, i.e. I'm married or I'm going with someone. In contrast, the women's response to the intimate request from males was, you've got to be kidding or what's wrong with you, leave me alone. Of course, the sociological interpretation that women are interested in level, men, is inter men are interested in sex, is not the only possible interpretation of this data. It may be, of course, both men and women were equally interested in sex, but that men associated fewer risks with accepting a sexual invitation than did women. Men may be more confident in their ability to fight back a physical assault than are women. Also, the remnants of the double standard may make women afraid to accept the man's invitation. Damn, in the 30-year-old study that she linked, thank you for encouraging me to go back on this. Jesus Christ, why would you... Why do they link studies that disprove their... Ugh. 
By the way, this is actually really, really easy to affirm. In my personal experience, because I fuck men and women, I'm much more willing to go over to a woman's apartment for a random hookup than a man's. It's not like I'm any less horny for guys than for girls. It's because I know, or at least I'm very confident, in my safety if I'm hooking up with a woman, less so with a guy. Though still pretty confident. Because I'm a big boy. Anyway, yeah, the study here basically includes my counter-arguments, so... These studies prove it, but of course, it's kind of obvious. Men's sexual ah. intent can be triggered just by a physical attraction. But women being physically attracted to men often is just a piece of the puzzle. Nope, the studies you looked at did not support that assertion. When it comes to how that relationship would move forward. And here's the thing. We want men to be attracted to us, right? It's important. It's important to romantic relationships, and it's empowering. But here's the thing that's not always going to work. We want control over who's attracted to us and when someone is attracted to us. Think about this scenario. If you're out at a party and a guy is across the room and you think he is very attractive and he kind of looks over at you and makes eyes at you, you're going to be happy that he's interested in you. But That really depends on who you are. Uh, there are plenty of women who don't like being eye-fucked in public, but... Now think of that exact same scenario when it's a guy that you're not interested in at all who you think is a creep, and he's looking over at you. This is the incel me. Also, wait, this has nothing to do with women. If there was a woman who was I thought was a creepy piece of shit, I wouldn't want her eye-fucking me either. Wait, this isn't a gender thing. This is incel Abby shit. What the fuck? Wait, if I was at a club and some cunty motherfucker piece of shit lady creep was eye-fucking me, how, like, you think I'd be like, oh, my male hormones lead, I am aroused. Speak, the eye contact is arousing me. You're not going to be happy in that situation. But here's the thing. You but by the way, this is literally that meme. What's the meme, you know, where the handsome guy walks into the cubicle and he's like, hey there, Jessica, hope you're looking great today. And she's like, oh, thanks, sweetheart. And then like the fat guy in the same clothes or whatever walks in. He's like, hey there, Jessica, you're looking lovely today. And she's like, um, security, you know, that one, you know what I'm talking about. Everyone's seen that damn comic. You don't get to choose who's attracted to you. And context and content for attraction is everything. And when men initially meet you, if you are dressed in an immodest way, oh no. they are going to be contending with the distraction of your body and wanting to know if maybe you are interested in a one night stand, as opposed to getting to know who you are. And whoa, 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 whoa. All right. We're projecting a few insecurities here, I think, okay? Listen, if, okay. If you're out at the club and you see some big honking titties hanging out of a shirt, okay? And that makes you less interested in knowing the person to whom the titties belong. I don't think that's on the titty owner. I don't think that's on the titty owner. I mean, look, dressing provocatively is a part of your presentation and it can be a way of communicating, like, sexual frivolity or sexual intent. But, like all things, you should probably check up on that first by talking to them a little bit. If you walk up to somebody in the club and they have big boobas just hanging out there, big boobas, you know? Like, you shouldn't walk up to them and just say, hello, big booba. Like, you should probably say, like, how's the weather? <laughs> or some dumb shit. You should probably talk about something else and, like... If, if, if you, okay, look, at the end of the day, listen, here's my libertarian individualist take, okay? If you're a lady, dress however the fuck you want to dress, and if you feel like guys aren't taking you seriously because you're dressed provocatively, then that means the guys are shit anyway, okay? You really want to have a boyfriend who's going to pay less attention to you because your tits are out? The fuck is that? So fucking weird, you know? Like, you're basically, like, screen checking. I, look, okay, again, like, my, I, I, I'm not, I, I, this isn't, cause I'm a guy, so my interactions with this are different, but, like, if you're a girl and you actually get the feeling you're being taken less seriously by guys, are you really thinking, like, oh no, if only I had dressed in a turtleneck, this guy might be treating me better and he might be my boyfriend? Is that what you want? I don't know, maybe if you're fucking desperate for attention. And your personality, and look further into the future than just that night and look maybe further into the future to see if there's a possibility of a relationship. No, there's she's doing it. She's literally like, if only you had worn the turtleneck, then this guy would have dated you instead of coming in between your tits in the bathroom of the bar. You're not gonna be distracted by that if you're dressed 
more modestly. Now, not 100% of the time. Also, what do you mean distracted by? How, what is a distraction? Like, what do you mean by distraction? It's your body. You have your body there, whether or not, should every woman dress in a fucking burqa? This is unironically the argument, by the way, that, um, that uh, 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 Muslim traditionalists make. It's the exact same argument. Literally, it's the identical argument, which is funny because Ben Shapiro fucking hates Muslim people, but this is the exact same argument. It's that uh, women should preserve their modesty by dressing in burqas because that way you don't distract and entice men with your bodies. It's the exact same thing. So, I mean, I don't know. Uh, trad unity, I guess. But it is more likely. You want a guy to get to know who you are, not just what you look like. Why can't and in you a do situation both? They're not mutually where exclusive. You're not to date, where maybe you're in a professional setting, you are creating a scenario and a context where they might be distracted by your sexuality. And men that you would never want. Damn, that sucks for them. Anyway want to view you that way are now brought into that context. Now, if a guy meets a girl who he's not initially attracted to, but he hangs out with her a bunch and ends up really loving her personality, then he may find himself attracted to that woman. And it's because men aren't only visual creatures. But when you are trying to make an initial first impression, distracting a guy with the way that you're dressed by being immodest is not going to work to your advantage because he's not going to be able to get to know who you are. Again, if a guy can I feel like such a w I feel like I'm doing the classic male feminist thing by pointing out this incredibly obvious like fact of reality, but if a guy can't learn who you are because your body is exposed that can you wait? Can you not meet people at the beach? Can you not like meet up with people at the beach because everyone's wearing like board shorts and bikinis and they're too distracted? Their lizard brains can't look past the exposed flesh of the other person. The too much booba. Like I, I, it's really weird. I I don't know. Again, like when I, I like I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but when I watch shit like this, it really makes me feel like. Abby is just like projecting some serious fucking insecurities that like when she was growing up, her parents would beleaguer, beleaguer her for any time like she showed any interest in in being uh, like, a, I don't know, like as a teenager or something like you want to dress up a little bit and the parents smack you down. And now she's internalized this feeling that her worth as a person is determined by her modesty. That shit just makes me feel really fucking weird. Well, he's distracted thinking about just the physical aspect of your relationship. And I do want to say that none of this is meant to imply that women who dress a certain way are responsible for a man acting in a horrible way and mm. taking advantage of them. Not at all. Men have self-control and they shouldn't act that way. That's disgusting. Okay, I appreciate that. No, I appreciate that. But it is weird to say you're even if you dress provocatively, you're not responsible for men raping you. But if you dress provocatively, you are responsible for men not taking you seriously. It feels like weird to draw the line at the midpoint. You know what I mean? What I'm talking about is women attracting the attention that you deserve and you want a relationship based attention. But what if the late what if the, the woman wants the big the big booby to be the attention they want? What if they want the booba? attention the booba attention i mean generally speaking i feel like if a lady goes to the club and has her tits out it's probably because she wants to be seen as somebody who has her tits out i don't mean like you should all i fuck her or like be weird or anything but i feel I, it's it's not like they accidentally put on the clothes they do right like if they're out there clubbing they probably there's probably a reason they dress the way they do women put a lot of effort into how they dress or at least a lot of them do i don't think they do this shit accidentally if women are wearing clothing that accentuates their ass and tits or stomach or hips or whatever they're probably doing it deliberately so i don't know more power to them that's what i every day i wake up and i think if only the world had less uh, people dressing provocatively that surely that would fix life's problems versus a sexual attention that is much more fleeting so that is the answer to part number one let's move on to category number two i dress this way for myself okay so here is my response to that uh -oh. how often do you dress sexy when you're at home alone and I'm not talking about taking a picture of yourself and sending it to somebody. Wait, 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 wait. That's not what they mean. Hold on, hold on. So there are people who dress up sexy at home, but 
That's not what they mean. Dressing up sexy for yourself doesn't mean you do it literally on your own. It means that you personally enjoy being viewed that way, even if you're not like pursuing a relationship or sex or anything like that. So there are people who dress up real fancy. By the way, I don't just mean dressing up sexy. I mean, there are people who dress like fashionistas and they go outside and they grocery shop. Why? They're not out there to look for a date or if they are, they're doing a bad job because they're going to the grocery store. They just like looking that way. And some people like looking that way with their boobies out. Because it's just nice. Isn't it nice to have, like, the artistry of good fashion out there on display? Now, I dress like a lazy piece of shit when I go outside, so I'm being a hypocrite by saying this, but when I see people who dress up, whether that dressing up be sexy dress up or just, like, fancy fashionista shit, when I'm all out and about, you know, the city, I think that's cool. I don't know, like... Everyone else is dressed in sweats and fucking hoodies. It's nice to see some people who are putting some work in, you know? I think that's nice. It's not even like a wanting to fuck people thing. It's just, I don't know. Or posting it on social media. I'm saying literally no one is going to see you that day and you are dressed sexy. People are social. We want people to notice us. You want people to see you. You can want to do something for yourself because of how you appear to other people. Because that will affect how you feel. But if you're not hanging around in sexy clothing by yourself with no one else to see you, you're not really doing it for yourself when you go out. Because you can want to dress immodestly in public without it being an effort to attract a relationship or sex. And that is what they mean by doing it for yourself. You do it because you like looking that way in public. Most women hang around in what's comfortable at home. Now, not 100% of women, but most women do. We wear something that's more comfortable when we're at home. But even outside of that, let's say that you are somebody who wears sexy clothing when you're at home alone. Why do you want- She's like misinterpreting the, okay. To feel sexy. Why do you like the feeling of sexualizing your body? Is it just because it's nice? No, it's because you want to feel confident that you are sexy and be- Why can't it just be because you look not? Wait, why can't you just be because you look nice? Look, I wouldn't know because I'm just like a dumpy dude or whatever, but like, I'm sure there are a lot of people who just like looking in the mirror and seeing someone like super attractive or sexy, but I don't know, right? Like, like, I, yeah, there are people who do this. I don't know. I feel like she's fundamentally misinterpreting some very basic elements of social behavior here, which is really telling uh, about her. Being sexy isn't something you feel in a vacuum. Of course it's not. Feeling what? sexy is Wait. important because it can influence the people around you and no, it, you could absolutely only the men that you want to attract. Now, I do want to address the idea of getting dressed every day during quarantine. Maybe you do decide you want to wear something sexier at home, but that is not the norm, right? We dress up every day while we've been in quarantine because we want to preserve a sense of normalcy. But in a normal day-to-day -day life, we're not going to be wearing clothing that is not comfortable at home. That just doesn't generally happen. Be this is so revealing. This is so interesting. I wonder if she workshopped this with her therapist before making this video. Even outside of all of this, dressing sexy for yourself isn't relevant because it doesn't really matter what your intentions are. You are living in the world and there are other people around you. If you smoke in a public area, you may not intend for everyone else around you to have to breathe in your secondhand smoke. But it's going to happen, it's just kind of part and parcel of it. And so okay, the difference is that when you smoke in public, you physically put secondhand smoke in front of other people, whereas secondhand booba is not actually a thing. What? <laughs> yeah, tank tops and big tits don't actually physically afflict other people in any way. You know, when you're out in public, you exhale, you get your carbon dioxide all over other people, but that's not against the law. Nobody has a problem with that because that kind of exposure doesn't have any obvious negative health detriments like secondhand smoke does. So your behavior, which includes the way that you dress, may not be for other people, but it will affect other people. That's, wait, that's fine. That's your right. Every time you go outside, when you drive, when you walk, anytime you go outside, you affect other people. Y you affect other people just by existing. That's fine. But that doesn't mean you're doing it for them. Like, I, I, 
I don't know what to say. Like, <laughs> this feels like really basic stuff. If I get a haircut, or if I trim my beard, or if I dress a certain way, when I go outside to go to the grocery store, I'm not looking to pick any chicks up. I'm not looking to fuck pussy. But if I look a little better than I would otherwise, I like that, because I like looking that way. And if other people see me looking that way, that's fine. But I'm not doing it to, like, attract a mate. I feel like Abby legitimately believes that the only reason you would ever go outside as a woman is, is as part of a mating scheme. Do you understand what I mean? Like, is anyone else getting that impression? Like, the only reason you would go out there, uh, yeah, is, is, is part of, like, some sort of uh, mating dance ritual. I don't know. True, Hyena. Because other people are going to see what you're wearing, and it's a distraction. It is. It's, it's okay, just fuck human em. nature. Fuck them. Fuck the other people. You got big booba? Fuck them. Oh, yeah, dude. That's what I want. When I go out in the town, I want all the girls with big tits to cover up so I don't get distracted. I, like, just, I, don't, I don't know. Is Abby trying to, like, narrow competition or something like that? You're, like, actively trying to make the world worse. What the fuck is your problem? This is Just so you all know, this is an affront to our American values, okay? Um, I don't care about the fucking distracting people. I'm so sorry. Sure. Now moving on to topic number three, which is I'm not disrespecting my body by dressing immodestly. Oh yeah, is Abby Shapiro admitting that she gets distracted by Big Booba? She wants people to cover up so she can she can resist her sapphic impulses. She's walking down the street and she sees some big glistening boobies jiggling attached to a jogger, and she's like, uh, uh, these these sluts, these these sluts, they need to cover up the so here's what I have to say to that. When I say that you're disrespecting your body by dressing immodestly, I'm saying that you're tying your value as a person to your body and it being You could make the same argument about having your hair out. Abby, why don't you wear a hijab? You're tying your value as a person to the volume and color of your hair. Abby, why don't you wear a face mask? You're tying the value of your person to your facial feature. This is a completely meaningless argument, okay? This is a literally meaningless argument. Anytime you demonstrate or display any element of your body or personality, people are going to notice it. That doesn't mean you're reducing your entire character down to that one element. This reminds me when in high school they announced over the PA that uh, the girls needed to be more modest and pull their skirts down and be careful of how you laid and suntanned on the grass during lunch because it's a distraction to the male faculty and staff. Jesus Christ, the male staff and faculty? And to this day I'm stunned they just admitted their guys were pedos. No wonder our theology teacher fucked a 16 year old. Yeah, dude, this is, the, the, this is why I argue that traditionalism and pedophilia go hand in hand too. Because when you view women's bodies as like vessels for male attention, their age starts to matter a lot less, you know? That's fucking disgusting. Jesus Christ. Why, why out that your fucking 30, 40, 50 year old male teachers are getting distracted by the high school girls suntanning? Jesus. Yeah, theology teacher, of course. Anyway, by the way, you never, nobody ever makes this argument. Nobody ever makes this argument about guys, okay? You know what's way more distracting and way more like personality encompassing for a guy than a girl having her tits out? A guy wearing an obnoxious article of clothing. I don't know if it, I don't know if we're talking about like one of those, uh, one of those like tap out shirts or like a stupid fucking fedora or like an oversized jacket. There are a lot of weird clothing trends, like some one item guys get fixated on. And those things, to, to me, are much more distracting than any tits. A Hagao sweatshirts. But nobody ever talks about how you're disrespecting yourself by making that you're the center of your character, okay? Just, uh Desired. It's really important to understand the difference between attraction to you and who you are and your body. For young women, they can crave attention and male attention, and uh, they may end up confusing desire for their bodies as love. And it's really important to know the difference because if you're constantly putting out your body and thinking that is love when a man desires- Again, I feel like you're projecting, Abby. Wearing a tight shirt when you go outside doesn't mean you can't distinguish between love and sex. Also, 
By the way, girls having trouble knowing whether or not a guy is interested in them or just interested in their body, that happens whether or not the girls dress provocatively. In fact, in my experience going through high school and college, usually it was the women who dressed modestly who were more vulnerable to being confused about the intentions of guys who went after them because the guys who went after them knew they were going after women who weren't as familiar with or comfortable with dis displaying their body in a sexual way. Women who had their tits out or who wore fucking belly shirts or whatever in community college were usually way more aware of whether guys just wanted to fuck or actually be in a relationship yeah like i don't know if like abby went outside in like a spaghetti top one time and then fell in love and it turns out the guy just wanted to fuck her or something but it's not true you then you're not going to really be giving yourself the best version of love which is not wholly based on what you look like. Now, there are people who are desensitized to showing off their bodies or seeing other people's bodies. I'm a theater person, I know. People change a lot around each other and they don't really notice because it's kind of part and parcel of the work. Doctors are the same way. They can look at somebody's body and not immediately sexualize them. But that doesn't mean that everyone is desensitized and it doesn't mean that everyone should be desensitized. You want there to be sexuality between men and women and you want desire between men and women. And so kind of saying the idea that women shouldn't be sexualized ever this is, so is weird. just not actually a good idea because we women want to be sexualized in the right context. Obviously, why not, not let the women decide what context they want to be sexualized in? So like if a girl goes out clubbing in the pussy strap, that probably means she's good with that because the pussy strap and we just let it be. Is that fine? Not in every context, but in certain situations, of course you want to be desired. But the thing for women is that they want to be able to choose when they are sexually desirable, in what situation and what person finds them attractive. But isn't deciding how you dress you choosing to an extent how you want to be perceived by other people? Why? Wait, you're saying you want women to be able to decide, but then you're saying you don't want women to make the choice to dress provocatively. So you don't want them to decide. You want them to only be sexualized in their own home with the person with whom they've already had 37 dates. Like, <laughs> you're removing people's choice. You're arguing against free choice. And you're not able to choose who's attracted to you just based on your emotions or your objective. You get to choose more so by the clothing that you wear. For example, if yeah. I want my husband to be attracted to me, I will wear something sexy for him at home, alone, okay. where no one else can see. If I don't want a random guy on the street to be attracted to me, then I'll wear something more modest when I'm out and about. Okay. Now, does that mean that he's definitely not going to look at me? Of course not. Men That's your are choice? gross sometimes, no matter what. And there's a huge responsibility on men not to treat women like objects and be disgusting. But the responsibility of women is that they should be aware of the signals they're sending out. So don't they, be naive about are. what those signals could be. And they should want to say- I So this video has oscillated between like, men and women have different sexualities and different sexual interests and women don't want to show off their bodies because it makes other people's attraction all to their body. She seems to be operating under the impression that women who dress provocatively don't know what they're doing. Of course they know what they're doing. They, they chose the clothes. They bought the clothes. They're dressing up and they want to look like that. It's fine. That's it. It's fine. So don't. So why are we being weird about it? Like, just let them dress that way. If you. So there's a. So to, to steel man this argument, there is a good version of what Abby Shapiro is saying here. And the good version of that is some sort of kind of like maternal educational segment where she talks about how it's totally okay to dress however you like uh, as long as it's respectable within the context of the setting so it's not inappropriate and as long as you're aware of the reactions that you're going to get for it. And I think that's a fine talk to give a kid like as a parent. Like if I had a daughter or something like that, I probably would have to have a conversation at some point where I would say like, hey, just so you know, like, there are guys who are creepy. There are guys who are going to misinterpret your intention if you dress in given ways. Y you know, you have freedom to do what you like within boundaries. You're my, you know, you're a kid, but uh, just be aware of that. I think there's a reasonable interpretation of that, but it's mixed up in all this like crazy tradcon bullshit.
like this isn't good advice at all. And it's internally contradictory as well. You can give good advice to kids. By the way, this is advice that I would give to like kids. I don't know if Abby Shapiro's channel is for kids. Um, you know? Like, there's nothing wrong with giving that type of advice, but it's kind of like the Jordan Peterson thing, you know? By the way, it's funny. You invoke Jordan Peterson's name. Jordan Peterson might argue that because Abby Shapiro is wearing makeup in this video that she's trying to sexually entice all of us. Abby, are your lips always that red? Are you trying to mimic the aesthetic of sexual arousal? Hmm. Mm. Um, Jordan Peterson will sometimes make salient arguments about gender relations in the workplace because there is some weird stuff that goes on there, and there are some con considerations to be taken, but then it'll go way the fuck out into right field, talking about how, like, this means there are in irreconcilable differences which we can't address as a society, so maybe men and women can't work together, and you can't... It's not good to dress up conservative propaganda as, like, parental advice. I think that's really weird send out the right signals, attracting the kind of attention that is more than just physical. The last category I want to address today is it's not my job to stop people from sexualizing me. Don't be naive about sexuality. Sexuality and being attracted to certain things isn't a social construct. We know what sort of- Wait, what? Okay. I don't know if she means, like, your individual sexual attraction isn't a social construct, even though it is, but, like... Okay, so, first of all, our general understanding of what beautiful people are has varied massively throughout time and culture. So, yeah, that's a thing. It's not like our brains were changing, just our conceptualization of what aesthetic tendencies were desirable. There are some elements of human bodies that always seem to be desirable. Facial uh, symmetry seems to be something that we're pretty much always into, um, like across the board. But y y yeah. Also, what you as an individual are attracted to is really, really dependent on a lot of the socialization you've received throughout your life. Like, I'm not... <laughs> I don't want to get into specifics because it's pretty personal, but if all of you think about it, I'm pretty sure you can, like, think about whatever shit you're into now, and you can think on, like, what conditions may have led to you being like that. You know? Shot drops before ice pop out of sockets, yeah. ...of things are desirable sexually. Dressing in a certain way not to be sexualized is, one, dealing with the reality about how men will respond to the way that you dress. Because just because you intend a certain thing doesn't mean that everyone is going to accept it and agree and react in the way that you want them to. And two, it's about being respectful to the people around you. A lot of men don't want to have to deal with seeing a woman in a really immodest outfit. Okay, I'm really sorry. Tough shit? What are you talk? Do you- Ah, uh, the- uh, The burden. The Sisyphusian burden I carry on my shoulders every day. I go outside, and there are big boobas, and they're all around me. Where is that picture of the guy- The- The guy from Simpsons, and the two strippers are dancing at him, and he's like, ah, what? <sighs> look, look. I mean, I'm not saying you should go outside naked or anything. Probably shouldn't do that. Or, like, just with pasties and a fucking uh, plastic straw wrapper on the, on the pussy lips. I mean, you should probably dress, probably put some clothes on. But if we're just talking, like, dressing up, like, sexy, th th tough shit? My rights begin, or my rights end where your rights begin, but you don't have a right to not see cleavage in public? Yeah. This is Ben and Abby. I think her husband has a wandering eye and she's making these videos to excuse his lack of self-control. This is some projection shit. Yeah, dude. This is the behavior of, the like, the women on Facebook who will DM, like, the friends of their boyfriend asking them to dress more modestly, you know? Oh, God. Um, when we went out to Applebee's the other day, I noticed that you were wearing some very tight jeans. And let me tell you, you look nice, but I was with my boyfriend, and I would appreciate it if you didn't subject him to those distractions in the future. Like, 
<laughs> at any time of the day because they don't want to have those thoughts in their mind. They don't want to have those thoughts at all. And it's not something you can always control with human nature. What? Your reactions in your behaviors, the actions that you take, of course you can control, but your thoughts, not so much. You're not responsible for not inciting thoughts in the people around you. Guys, you can make this argument for everything. If you're an interracial couple, you shouldn't go outside because the thoughts other people might have are distracted. What do you, this means nothing. This is literally thought crime. What, what are you talking about? Fucking thought police Abby over here. Jesus Christ. That is a, I didn't expect the argument to get this dystopian, you know? Yeah, can, can Abby not control her thoughts about women? Like, I'm a pretty, I don't know, I'm a pretty horny guy, but like, when I'm outside and I see like a girl that's dressed to the nines, I usually just look and I think booba, and then I continue doing with whatever I was doing. Is this like, I, I don't know, like how many husbands with wandering eyes we have here. Like, if I'm, if I'm out and about in the day, I'm usually just trying to get my work done, like, or errands or whatever the fuck I'm doing. Like, I, it's not like I see booba and then I'm like, <sighs> Uh, b b b booba. Like, I, I don't... <laughs> it just doesn't affect me that much. And it's unfair to expect that everyone should have to ignore your sexuality because you decided that your sexuality shouldn't affect anyone else. A good what? example is if you play extremely loud music on the street and you expect people not to wince when they walk by. It's human nature to respond to stimuli. So that's true for loud music and it's true for dressing immodestly. Loud music? S s covers an entire area with sound waves that are literally impossible to avoid. If you see a girl with booba, all you have to do is look not at booba. Or if you want to, you can just look at the booba. It doesn't matter because loud noise physically hurts you. Booba only heals. And dressing immodestly has practical uses. It's important for women to kind of get what they really want, which is a man who's going to want to get to know who they are, not just their body. And it's also important to recognize how it affects well, everybody else. Why are you spending so much time on Abby Shapiro? She's irrelevant, unimportant. A couple of reasons. First of all, I find it funny. Second of all, it's funny to see the reverse incel takes being given by Ben Shapiro's sister. Third of all, this video was, well, I haven't watched this video before, but it's pretty fucking crazy, isn't it? That's fun. Fourth of all, we need a good breakup between all the dismal political news about COVID-19 and coups and civil war and all that bullshit uh and fifth of all i don't i don't know like it's just a fun fun subject come, come on so it's for you and you getting what you want but it's also for other people and being respectful i hope you guys enjoyed today's video i hope you enjoyed the format that we did today i wanted to be able to respond all right good meme abby uh i would give anything to be able to talk to abby by the way about the incel takes that'd be a lot of fun i would love to be able to talk to abby like can't girls just do what they want? Like, I don't know. It'd be very, very fun. Um, there's no way that's ever going to happen, though. Good luck, Abby. Good luck with whatever horrible childhood you must have had to have led you to these thoughts. I hope that you get over them soon. And I respect your right to dress however you want, as long as you're not infringing on the rights of other people. Godspeed.